I'm back, bitches. <laughs> Thank you so much for waiting these long months for me to come back to YouTube. It turns out when you have a channel about your bakery and how to make it successful, um, your bakery might become successful and you might not be able to do your YouTube channel. Proud and wily. But um, I'm back. I'm gonna change out of these goddamn four wheelers. And then we're gonna make a cake. So a year ago, I posted my first YouTube videos about baking a gluten-free cake and making dairy-free icing. And I feel like since then, I have learned a lot and baked hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of cakes uh, and have kind of perfected this recipe so that it's a little bit more simple, a little bit more foolproof, and I'm a little bit better at explaining it. So we are going to do a redo of my gluten-free cake. Maybe this is the first time you're seeing this video. We'll speed it up. I'm gonna start off by greasing two eight-inch cake pans. Today I'm using heart pans because that's cute. Um, you can either do this with a spray uh, with oil and flour, or I use this lining mix. Uh, it's a one-to-one -one mixture of gluten-free flour and oil, um, and I just use that for all my cakes. You paint it on, and it's a lot easier than greasing and flouring and dusting things off. Okay, next we need five eggs. I'm going to separate the whites into this bowl, and I'll get another one for the yolks. I'm just showing off. Stay. Okay, so we have five eggs. We're separating yolks and whites. If you're smarter than me, you'll separate the whites into a bowl and then put them in here because you don't want any yolk or fat at all in this egg white mixture. Um, but again, I make poor decisions sometimes, so, and I don't like doing dishes. Okay, I have one cup of white sugar. You could totally use brown sugar if you wanted to do like a brown sugar sponge. And I'm just gonna split that between the yolk mixture and I'm gonna turn this on and when it gets foamy, I'm gonna add the sugar. It's not plugged in. <laughs> Okay, so those egg whites have been whipped to a medium stiff, kind of like a little floppy there. So in the yolk bowl, I'm going to whisk the yolks with the sugar until it kind of pales in color so that the sugar is incorporated in the egg yolk. We don't need it to like pale ribbon stage, just enough that it's a little bit lighter in color and a little bit more drizzly than gloopy, if that kind of explanation works for you. So to this, we're gonna add our flavors. So today we're making a London Lavender Fog Cake. I 100% haven't said that yet, which is one of my most requested recipes. Um, very much inspired by the cafe drink, Earl Grey tea, steamed milk, um, and a little bit of lavender. So to this, I'm adding a teaspoon of vanilla, a single drop of lavender essential oil. This is food grade lavender oil. Um, the brand I'm using is Loran and they make a bunch of different uh, emulsions, extracts and um, oils. So like I pour it in the cap, I pour it back into the bottle so that the cap is empty. So I'm adding just a single drop that's it. Otherwise, it will be overpowered. Sometimes I even drip it down the side of the mixing bowl just to ensure that not too much goes in. Um, and for the Earl Grey, I'm adding a teaspoon of Earl Grey tea. I'm not making a tea or extracting it or anything like that. I'm just adding the tea leaves right to the batter. I have ground up these tea leaves in a blender so that they're a little bit more powdery. Otherwise, you would just use a single tea bag, empty it in here. So a teaspoon. That gets whisked together. Next, I'm gonna add half a cup of oil. 
Usually I would use a neutral oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, something like that, but I'm having like a South of France fantasy of lavender and olive oil together. So we're doing olive today. And then I'm gonna add half a cup of soy milk. And you can use any non-dairy milk or regular milk if that's your vibe. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna add that makes this like very creamy coffee shop-esque is a tablespoon of coconut milk powder. You don't have to add this, but I think it just like zhuzhes it. Okay, to this we're gonna add one and a half cups of flour. Previously I had done a mixture of almond and gluten-free flour, but uh-uh. We're just gonna use one and a half cups of gluten-free flour. I'm using Bob's one-for-one -one mix. And a half. And then I have a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of sea salt, and a quarter teaspoon of xanathan gum. And you're just going to use your whisk to mix it, the dry ingredients a little bit. Just mix them so that they're not like going in by themselves and then whisk it all together. And keep whisking until there's no more lumps. Okay, so that is all mixed together. We're gonna take one scoop of our egg whites and whisk that in. And that's going to make it a lot easier to fold the rest of the egg whites in. Next step is to fold in the cheese. What does that mean? What does fold in the cheese mean? He folds it in. Okay, so the rest of the egg white goes in here. And we'll fold it in. Uh -huh. You just fold it in. So just lifting the batter from the bottom on top of the egg whites. And we're doing that to make sure we don't lose those precious air bubbles that we just spent all that time whipping. And you'll just keep doing that until you don't see any more streaks of the egg whites. Okay, that's it. We're gonna put it in our cake pan. If you don't have two eight inch cake pans, this cake also works in three six inch cake pans. So we're just gonna divide this. Sometimes I weigh it, but you're probably not going to, so. Okay, so these two cakes go in a preheated oven at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes. They'll be golden at the top and just slightly pulling away from the sides of the cake pan. Okay, I'm going to tidy up a little bit and then we are going to get started on the Swiss meringue buttercream to decorate this cake. Now we're gonna make a Swiss meringue buttercream. It's basically the same as my previous recipe, same ingredients, slightly different method. So I have 150 grams of egg whites in this bowl. It's about five egg whites and I'm adding 300 grams of white sugar. And we're gonna put this mixture over a double boiler um, just to heat it until the sugar is fully dissolved. And that's gonna heat up the egg whites and cook off anything we don't want. And it's gonna dissolve the sugar um, it'll take like 10 or 15 minutes. You don't have to stir it all the time. It's not a risotto. It'll just kind of do its thing and the water bowl will protect it from scrambling. Okay, so our sugar is fully dissolved and you can check that by just putting a little bit between your fingers and rubbing it. And if you feel any granules, it's not done yet. We're gonna add this to our mixer with the whisk attachment. To this, I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of sea salt and like the teensiest pinch of citric acid, which is going to help balance the sugar and also give a little bit more volume and structure to our egg whites. So like, and we're gonna let this go for like eight to 10 minutes until it's stiff, glossy peaks and the mixture has cooled down a little bit.
so our cakes are done baking. So you can see they're a little bit golden on top and they're just pulling away slightly from the edges of the cake pan. And I'm gonna run this offset spatula around the edges. Okay, and see when I touch it, it's quite springy. It springs right back. We are going to let these cool in their pans for about five or 10 minutes, and then we'll flip them out to cool on a wire rack. But it's very important to let them cool in the pan for a little bit or else when you flip them out, they'll just fall apart. Okay, so our egg whites are gorgeous and glossy. So to this, I'm going to add 450 grams of vegan fat. That could mean one pound, like one block of vegan butter, or what I prefer for a little bit more stability is one quarter vegetable shortening and three quarters of vegan butter. So that's 150 grams of shortening and 300 grams of vegan butter. I'm using like a President's Choice one. It's cut up into little bits and it's like a little bit warm, but still a little bit cool to the touch, which is important with vegan buttercream. And we're gonna add it all in at once. And I'm also gonna add like a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're gonna whip this at a low setting. So on my mixer, that's about a two or a four, and that's gonna inhibit some of the air bubbles from forming. Mix. So once you see the lumps of fat have disappeared, you're gonna switch to the paddle for your buttercream and you're gonna let it mix for like 10 or 15 minutes. Like go take a shower, leave it on the stir setting super low and that's gonna whip out all of those air bubbles. Okay, I'm gonna flip these cakes out onto here. Um, I do this in a terrible way that only someone whose hands have nerve damage from baking too much would do. Please wait until this is cool. You can also use a towel. And what I do is I flip it onto my hand and then I put it down because if I put this side directly on the cooling rack, then all of this cake will stick to it. So this is my system. You can also like put it onto a plate and then flip it, but this works for me. Don't do that though. I don't know why I'm showing you this in a video. It's not, you're, it's gonna fall apart in your hands. It just, and then you get the goodies on the bottom. That's the, that's the treat. Okay, so our cakes have cooled and I actually just popped them in the fridge for like half an hour. Usually I would honestly bake these cakes like a day or two in advance and either freeze them and let them defrost overnight the day before I frost the cake, or I would just pop them in the fridge and ice them the next day. It's a lot easier. So our frosting is here. It's like so beautiful. Floof. So I've put some of the white buttercream in this piping bag to decorate with. And I'm just gonna color this buttercream and also flavor it with lavender oil. So we have like a lavender vanilla buttercream. And this is when you really wanna be careful with the extract because it can go from a beautiful light lavender taste to like coating your mouth, disgusting very quickly. It's a lot better to have too little than too much. So I put <laughs> the oil in the cap and I just put a toothpick in there to absorb some of the oil and I just touch the buttercream with that. And that's probably enough. You can do that one more time with the clean end of the toothpick, but never more than half a drop, a drop in the buttercream, it'll be enough. And I'm gonna add coloring. Okay, I'm gonna mix that up and then we'll decorate this cake and I'll see you in a minute. Now I'm just gonna put the cake together and if you need a little bit more information on how to do that, I have another video that's a lot more in depth so I'm gonna to link to that below.
Okay, well, I think I've added enough frill and floof to this beautiful cake, but it is still missing something. I just feel like it needs a swan, a swan, swan cake, you know? I hope this cake encourages you to make a cake for a celiac or gluten-free friend or for yourself. Um, and send me pictures if you do. So there you have it, a beautiful, gluten-free, dairy-free, lavender London fog cake, resplendent with pearls, and a little swan. Swan is optional, swamptional. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I hope uh, you come back. Hope I didn't scare you off. Hope we bake more things and talk about other things. <laughs> Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all those things. Bye. You didn't think I wasn't going to show you a slice, so. I don't have a plate. It's so soft and fluffy. <laughs> the olive oil was smart. Okay, I'm gonna go eat this cake now. Actually, by this time, 